Even though I knew the Bible taught that there is no respecter of persons with God, he wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. I had never given any thought to the souls of the people in the country of Zimbabwe until I met a native of that country at Harding when we were students there back in the 70s. Dorian Flynn and ours passed cross then. His sister and Summers passed cross as students there as well. And then we both became preachers. Our paths crossed again in the 90s when uh, he and Sherry were serving as missionaries in the Caymans. And uh, they asked if uh, the congregation where I preached would help support them in that efforts, and we did. They then made the transition to the Darby Drive Church and then began working in Zimbabwe. And uh, we continued our support there 18 years ago. Dorian and Sherry asked Ken Delano and I to go with them to Zimbabwe to spend a month to work there among the precious people which we did. Like all of you who have gone on missions, whether that be to Antigua or Estonia or India or Tanzania or Mexico or any other place for that matter, my month in Zimbabwe was an eye-opening experience. And I remember writing in my journal that um, I wish my children could be here, not to feel guilty for how blessed we are, but just to realize how blessed we are. I know when I came back, uh, my wife said that it took about a month for me to really even talk about the experience, and it was overwhelming. In the words of an old song, I often thought, why me, Lord, what have I ever done to deserve even one? of the pleasures I've known. I continue to believe that uh, we're blessed, blessed to be Americans, but my worldview was expanded in that trip. And um, I was blessed in numerous ways. Let me show you a map of Zimbabwe here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we went 13,000 miles. I met Dorian, uh, flew to Detroit met him and Ken and Sherry there. We flew overnight uh, to Frankfurt, Germany, and then overnight again to Zimbabwe. Ken and I were blessed to room together, and that was a blessing. We woke up one morning. We had a canvas wall that separated uh, where we stayed from a patio. Next slide, please. We woke up one morning, rolled the canvas up, and there were three bad boy warthogs waiting either for breakfast or for us or for both there. Uh, the next morning, we rolled the canvas up, and there was that monkey in the top corner there waiting on us. I will say that I've drunk a lot of coffee in my time on the porch at Bent Brook subdivision where I live. That has never happened to me over there. We were going to a seminar uh, one day, a World Bible School seminar, where we were going to teach for about four hours. And those two, if you can see in the top right-hand corner, those two elephants just came out of the woods, came across, walking across the four lanes, stopped in the median for a while. And I will say, I've traveled Florence Boulevard a lot in my life. That has never happened to me there either. They will stop traffic, by the way, I will tell you that. But the real blessing was not the wildlife. The real blessing, even though it was fabulous, was not seeing one of the seven wonders of the world, the smoke that thunders, which is Victoria Falls. And it is absolutely a phenomenal uh, sight of God's creation. But the real blessing were the people. The blessing were the precious children who sat attentively for hours and listened as I would preach, Ken or Dorian would preach, and someone would translate for us, and then afterwards they would just uh, almost they'd love on you till it was time to go home. It was uh, a blessing was to meet uh, those two brothers on the left side there who had saved their money for uh, a year or so to ride bus after bus after bus to come to the World Bible School Seminar where we would be teaching that day. Ken and Dorian taught the gospel to people who needed to hear it. And they asked that I teach uh, a, um, a four-hour study on the book of Ephesians uh, to preachers about uh, the beautiful portrait of Christ and his bride, the church. And I did. Those two men, bless me, 
I was humbled that anyone would travel that far to want to sit at someone's feet and study the word of God. They were preachers. And so from chapter 1, we talked about how blessed we are to be in the family of God and have Jesus as our older brother. And we talked about the fact that uh, we're blessed to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Uh, I won't ever forget, they asked me how big was the church where I preached. And I told them at that time it was about 250 members. They were just in awe. But I want you to listen closely. I told them that um, it is not the size of the church that pleases God. What pleases God is whether or not that church is alive. That's according to Ephesians chapter 2. What pleases God is whether or not she's a praying church like Ephesians 1 talks about, Ephesians 3 talks about, Ephesians 5 talks about. What pleases God is whether or not that church is grieving the Holy Spirit of God, which uh, the end of chapter 4 tells us we better not do, and whether that uh, church and whether individual members are walking in step with the Spirit, which is in Ephesians 5 and verse 18, tells us to be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, what really matters, I told those brothers, is whether they're being salt and light in the world where they're planted, whether they're loving God and loving their neighbor, whether they're reaching out and sharing Jesus or not, whether they're teaching the people who sit at their feet to spiritually grow up into the fullness of the Messiah and be like Jesus, which he talks about twice in this book. Um, I was stunned by their uh, sponge-like um, response. And I was stunned that they would uh, to go to that length to help some, hear someone help equip them to share the good news. But whether the good news is shared in Zimbabwe, any of the places that many of you have been, or whether it's shared here in Florence like it was a Tuesday afternoon at Cherry Hill Complex where I was blessed to go, or whether it'll be shared in your life group tonight or any number of places. The beauty of sharing the gospel is this, when it lodges, in uh, the deep, good soul of good and honest hearts, it touches and moves people to become children of God. And they rise from those waters deep with a commitment to go and share the good news with others. After one of our uh, meetings, seven men wanted to be baptized into Christ. Brother Austin Vimba, who's a graduate of Heritage Christian University, took them, you can see, to a, one, a swimming pool and baptized those seven into Christ. It was a very moving experience. After uh, our seminar in Victoria Falls, a couple of uh, men that Ken and Dorian uh, taught wanted to become Christians. And we went down uh, below the falls to the edge of the Zimbabwe River that separates Zimbabwe from the country of Zambia. And uh, the local preacher there baptized him into Christ. I thought it was interesting that before he got into the river, uh, he took a big uh, boulder or rock, picked it up and threw it in. We asked him what he was doing. He said, making sure there was no crocodiles there. I will tell you, we don't have that problem this morning if anybody wants to be baptized into Christ, but it's a different experience. Nevertheless, the waters of baptism are the same everywhere, aren't they? And what happens in, the, in that through what God does there? It happens right there in that swimming pool right here, wherever it is. We are grateful. We um, have several Cross Point members who are currently supporting and sharing the gospel through World Bible School. This was my first experience with World Bible School. And we went out uh, for about half a day each morning uh, for that month in Pairs. This was Landon. Some of you know Landon, who's grown up now, living in Chattanooga. But Landon was my partner that day, and we would go and we would tell people that we were ambassadors of Jesus Christ and that we were Americans in their country. And we would ask if they would love to study the Bible with an American. Uh, and and it was a, a fascinating experience, as they would, uh, many of them would agree to do so. Uh, I don't think I've ever told this story till this morning, but I went, uh, knocked on the door uh, one day, asked a lady that question. 
uh, and Dorian and Sherry were in the van. We were canvassing this in this neighborhood. Uh, the lady said she was a graduate of World Bible School, and she said, "Just a moment." She went to her back into her room. She came back and she brought a uh, framed certificate hanging on her wall of the completion of five five World Bible School lessons. I asked her if she happened to know where her teacher was from, and she said, oh, yeah, yeah, he's from Florence, Alabama. I said, Florence, Alabama, that's interesting. Do you know what church? She said, the Darby Drive Church. I'm 13,000 miles away, and I'm on the porch, and we're having this conversation. Is this not amazing? God moves in mysterious ways. Teacher was somebody from Darby Drive. I could not wait to go back and tell Ken and Dorian and Sherry. And I will tell you this morning that brother sitting here in this assembly. Is that not amazing? It's amazing, isn't it? The point is that the gospel changes lives. And going on missions like so many of you have done and do, it gets in our blood. Right now we want to show you a video of four of our members who have been to Zimbabwe and love not only the people there, but the work. And we love Haley, who is our missionary there. We're thrilled to have him back with us. It's been 11 years since he's been here. Uh, after we show this video that we hope will encourage you and Haley, Brother Mike Shepherd, who was with Haley in Zimbabwe just two weeks ago, will come and introduce him and pray over him. And Haley will finish out our time together. Would you watch this video, please? I'm Denise Willingham and I've known Haley for about 16 years. I first met Haley when he came to the States for school and he lived with the Flins. But I got to, to know him so much better in 2014 when I was able to take a trip to Africa and lived with him for about 10 days. My name is Ken Delano and I've known Haley since 1997 when I first went to Zimbabwe with Dorian Flynn on a, on a mission trip. I'm Lee Flynn and I've been a friend of Haley's for almost 20 years. He's considered in our family as my brother and uh, I'm really proud to have him as a friend and a family member. My name is Diane Young and I met Haley and his beautiful wife Noma in June of 2014. My daughter Sarah and I went with Denise and Lisa to Zimbabwe for two weeks and uh, we stayed at the Partners for Africa house. I met Haley through some of the work that my parents were doing in Zimbabwe and um, shortly after that Haley came to the U.S. to go to school at IBC which is now Heritage and when he got here he came by bus from Los Angeles, California and we lived in Texas at the time and he stopped at the bus station in Texas and my dad picked him up and he stayed at our house for a couple of days on his way to Alabama. I first met Haley at the bus stop in uh, Florence, Alabama back when we had a bus station. I was in my office at Darby Drive one day. Haley's dad calls and says, Ken, I want to send Haley there and we want him to go to school so that then he can come back and work with us for the churches here in Zimbabwe. I said, okay, when do you plan for him to come? He says, actually, he's already there. So I said, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with this guy? So that's how I first met Haley. What impresses me the most about Haley and Noma would be their kindness. They, they really seem to make you feel welcome from the beginning. They impress me so much by the, just the love that they have for the community there in Africa. Uh, what impresses me the most about Haley and Noma is, is their dedication to the people of Zimbabwe. They represent Jesus well and they love God with all their heart. I think if there was one word that really sums up the gifts that uh, he and Noma bring to the table as far as ministry in the Lord's Church, it would be versatility or adaptability. They, they work well with all ages of people, young people, older people. Uh, they've worked with the programs there, feeding the orphans, and they're just willing to do whatever it is that needs to be done to, to further the cause of God's kingdom. Uh, and they work together so beautifully, and it's just a great thing to see. Haley and Noma are the hands and feet of Jesus in Zimbabwe. I was thinking about, I believe it's in Corinthians, where Paul um, is talking about being all things to all people. And, and I've seen Haley and Noma 
um, whether it's some Americans over there and, and how they are with us and being able to communicate or whether it is with all the different people from different age groups and different background, different languages that they speak, um, they really are talented and together they make a really powerful couple. The whole two weeks we were there, they were continually working, day in and day out. And, and their, their work is amazing. And uh, they, they are amazing, wonderful people. I love them dearly. I pray for them daily and, uh, and the work that they do in Zimbabwe. The work there in Zimbabwe could not go on without Haley and Noah. Hello everyone. Two weeks ago, Haley and I were together. We got up about 4.30 in the morning on a Sunday and drove four and a half hours to this hut here where we did some uh, speaking and teaching. I went first and then Haley went second. And I've got a picture that Haley sent me afterwards. You can see I looked right at home there. Um, and I know, that, uh, I know that Haley feels at home this morning because he is home. I've known Haley for close to 20 years now. In fact, Haley served as my intern years and years ago at Darby Drive, and just so grateful that he's here with us this morning. I want to invite him up now. I want to pray over him uh, before he speaks. God, we come before you now and just grateful that Haley is here with us. I ask that you bless his family that's back in Zimbabwe, that you, that you fill him with your spirit now as he opens up the word and teaches us. Thank you for the opportunity for him to be here with us. I ask, Lord, that you bless our time together. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I bring greetings from Zimbabwe. Uh, I know my family, uh, they wish to be here as well, uh, to be with you. And the brethren in Zimbabwe, uh, they are just so grateful uh, with the work uh, that you are doing here in Florence, Alabama. Uh, I've been gone for 11 years. And uh, one of the first few things that I did when I came back was to go to Burger King. <laughs> um, but it's been great uh, being, being back home. Uh, there are so many things that, that, that have happened in the 11 years. Um, you know, we, we, we have had so many uh, come to the Lord uh, through the work that we do. Uh, but one of the greatest challenges is, you know, you, have, you hold a meeting and, and people get baptized, they come. One of the greatest challenges that we have had is having people to remain faithful in the Lord. You know, um, probably it's because of the challenges and difficulties, you know, that that they go through, uh, that our country is in. But one thing for sure, God is concerned about the souls of men. You know, God is concerned about the the welfare of, of men. God is concerned about us spreading the news uh, to all people all over the world, uh, whether it's in Florence, Alabama, or it's in Zimbabwe. In First Peter uh, chapter 3, I believe, says that he delays coming so that many may be saved. You know, but a lot of things distract us. You know, those that come to the Lord sometimes you know, uh, uh, just the way life is. You know, when Jesus was crucified, I wondered, you know, those Roman soldiers that actually accompanied Jesus to the cross, have you ever thought and wondered uh, what was going through in their minds? Uh, I reckon they, they, they woke up one morning, you know, it was just a regular day, and they were going to work. You know, they did what they did, you know, on a normal working day, you know, because they had done this several times. In fact, one writer says that during that time, uh, over 500 people were being crucified every week. So this is something that they were used to doing. You know, it was a normal day, a normal working day. So here comes, you know, uh, their duties or their errands they had to do. They just didn't realize that that day, their prisoner was going to be the son of God. Sometimes I got to think that sometimes, you know, in this life, you know, I know in Zimbabwe, for instance, on a Monday morning, 
maybe a father would wake up in the morning and, and, and you know, he tries to go to work. When I say try to go to work is most of them, they don't have, in, there's no employment, but they go out and try to, to find something to do so that, you know, in the evening time they can bring food on the table. I know women, they, they, they would, early in the morning, they would go with buckets, you know, full of water. They would go to the nearest water source. You know, children would be walking, going to school. You know, so we all get caught up in, in, in trying to survive, trying to make a living. You know, that's how it is. But sometimes we forget, you know, uh, the role of God in our lives. You know, just like the Roman soldiers, you know, they, 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 they were performing, performing their duties. You know, they just didn't know that, you know, this will be the Son of God. It's easy for us today maybe to, to stand on the side and, and, and judge and say, how could they go on and, and, and do this? Didn't they realize that this was the Son of God? But just like us today, maybe we wake up, you know, in the morning and we go to work and we are so busy doing the things that we do of this life, and yet God is working in our lives. You know, there, there are two things that I want you to notice with these Roman soldiers. In Matthew chapter 27, verse number 29, the Bible says that they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They wove thorn branches and put it on his head. They knelt before him in mockery and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews. Now, like I said, the first thing, they had done this or they had seen this all, bef all before. But the second thing, they were focused on other things. These guys, they are, they are doing their jobs. You know, in fact, the Bible says that uh, they played uh, games. You know, uh, they, they were fighting over Jesus' robe. You know, they didn't pay, pay, pay attention to what was going on on the cross. It was the Son of God being crucified. And he was just right there with them, in the midst of them. They walked with them, you know, all the way to the cross. And they didn't even realize that this is the Son of God that we are crucifying. Now, I don't know, you know, in our lives, in our situations... But God has always promised and said that I will never leave you. It reminds me of the Israelites one time. You know, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, you know, the Bible says that, you know, God said that I want you to remember that I was right there with you in the wilderness. All the struggles that you went through, you know, all the, the challenges that you went through, I was right there in the midst of all that. And then you would ask the question, why, God? Why let us go through all these difficult times? Why, God? We are here, we are faithful, we've been faithful to you. But why would you let us uh, go through all these challenges? And God says that, I want to know what is really in your heart. You know, after all said and done, you will say, thank you, Lord, for the illness that I have, you know? Thank you, Lord, for whatever that I have that I seem to be struggling with. Because at the end of the day, it's going to make me stronger. The Son of God walked with the, with the soldiers, with the Roman soldiers, and they didn't even realize that he was there. How many situations in your life that probably you have gone through and failed to realize that it was the hand of God? You know, um, there's an incident once that happened. Um, I, I wasn't involved in a car wreck, but what happened was the ball joint, you know, of, of a car. You know, like, like the ball joint, uh, it's, it's that w when the wheel of a vehicle, it connects with the suspension, the car suspension, the mechanics will tell you. But the ball joint came off, and the, the, the vehicle veered, you know, back and forth off the road, and then it finally overturned three times. And beside me was a lady who was sitting, and there was a gentleman there. You know, but w when all that was done, I remember sort of waking up, you know, and, and, and while still in the car, but the lady who was sitting here, she was outside, you know, she was injured. And also the gentleman was lying down somewhere, you know, injured. 
and, and, and one of the first things that the lady said, uh, she said that, man, we were so lucky. You know, is everybody okay? And then the gentleman there who was, you know, lying down somewhere, he started praying. In, in Africa, we have medium spirits, you know. So he started praying, thinking, you know, the medium spirits, you know, his medium spirits. But then later on, we all got together, you know, and, 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 and we realized that actually it was God. It was the hand of God. There are so many people who have been in situations like that and they didn't make it. But sometimes we forget, you know, because we are so busy. Maybe I need to do this. I need to take my kids to school. Maybe I need to, uh, to take my, my, my child to a ball game. Or I need to do this and that. We are so busy. And we fail to see the hand of God. God actually in the midst of us. I don't know, but, you know, God promised. He said that, behold, I will be with you. Well, one of the soldiers was there, the centurion. He was able to realize that surely this is the son of God. In the midst of all that chaos, what was going on, all the, you know, people shouting or whatever, you know, things that were going on, the centurion, that soldier, he was a commander, a Roman co commander. He was actually able to say that, no, this was the son of God. He was able to realize that Jesus was the son of God. So it's possible for us, you know, in our busy schedules to realize that God is working in our lives. The invitation is given this morning. Why don't you come forward and let the church pray for you? And those who, if there's anyone who doesn't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this is a wonderful opportunity. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen.